Good afternoon and welcome to my daily um, chat. <laughs> Um, before I get to introduce myself, let me just say this is episode number 482, um, or broadcast number 482. Got trust issues? Here's why. So before I jump into that, let me start off by saying, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance, actually create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. and. For the last year and nine months, actually more than that, but let's put it this way. I've been doing daily broadcasts called Messages for the Mas Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this is number 482. So I've done a bunch of these, 482. Let me articulate them more clearly. And this topic hasn't come up this way before, but it's come up a few times. So I thought I'd bring it out and just lay some information on you. Um, and I'm not sure it's going to tie into the last three talks I did. Just, just as a sidebar, the last three talks I did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that, obviously, were a lot about feminine support, women being repressed and lost stuff like that. This may tie into that, but I'm not going to promise. So we'll see what happens. So, trust, got trust issues? Here's why. And I also need to put a, pre a preface on this saying that I've got a few already lined up, but I may not have every reason out there, but this will give you some ideas in case you've been challenged by trust issues in your relationships and in life. So let's get started, shall we? Um, first of all, if you have trust issues with people you meet, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with talking about women meeting men because that's my main work focus, but it was worked the other way around as well. I believe I haven't actually got there yet, but let me see. So let me start by saying this. Ladies, if you find yourself being, um, let me say this, having trust issues with the men you meet, either on, in person or for dating apps, there may be more than, one, two, more, than, more than two things going on. So I'm going to throw one at you and then throw a second one at you. First one is that the issues you have about trust are inside of you. This is going to sound really obvious at first, but I'll get into details, so bear with me. So the trust issues may be inside of you. The second one is, the trust issues may be out there. And that's kind of obvious, either or, it's inside or outside, that sounds so simple. Well, let me put some more um, meat on the plate, as it were. That wasn't meant to be crude, by the way, which <laughs> is what it said. It's like more butter on the bread, let's put it there. <laughs> I'm trying to put a, a metaphor that doesn't have any, any connotations to it. Damn, it's not so easy as it used to be. So, let's start with the one out there first. I actually, I actually saw a post on a friend's wall today. Again, I get inspired by stuff I see. Talking about this um, guy she saw in the grocery aisle at the store. And she's a good looking woman. And she sees this guy and he's cute. And he basically avoids eye contact with her. And she starts doubting herself. I'm sorry, I'm thinking I approach this one. So imagine, picture this scenario. So she's walking through the aisles in the grocery store. This guy's walking through and sees her. And he looks at her and, and like he's wowed by her, but then he looks away and walks away. And she starts doubting herself. She doesn't trust that it's real, doesn't trust herself, doesn't trust him. Now, again, on the external, talking about him, here's a few things that might be going on for him. First of all, he might have had to disappear because he forgot he has to do something totally, totally independent of the fact that he saw you. It might be something just to do with realize he realized the time or something to see the clock or notice his phone or something where he went, oh crap, I need to be somewhere else. It has nothing to do with you, one. Secondly, it could be the fact that he's already in a relationship and like she's going to see, seeing you as such a hot woman, he's like, I need to walk away before I don't want to be in trouble with my, part, with, my, with my wife or lady, whatever. Third one, which is a whole different possibility, is he's not actually not interested in you because he's gay, for example. I'm just throwing examples out there just to give you some, a spectrum of choices to realize that it ain't about you. Because a lot of times you think it is and it may not be. There's a fourth one out there I was sitting with. Oh, yes. The fourth one could be this one, which is actually the one I think came up because I saw some texts about this afterwards too. That he walked away or actually almost, I mean, it's like he ghosted before he even got out with us. That's kind of like, is that pre-ghosting? I'm not sure if that's the same term. But basically he disappeared because the reality was, my belief, is that he didn't trust himself. And so he chickened out. And in fact, the trust that she was, fe the lack of trust she was feeling was his, not hers. 
we men, and I'm going to out men right now, it's for you ladies, generally have fragile egos. And our confidence level when it comes to meeting women has a inverse proportion to their, attract, attract, to their beauty. So say it this way, the more beautiful a woman is for most men, the less comfortable we are approaching you. So if a man chickens out from talking to you, it may be because you're that good looking, perhaps to him, maybe not to everybody, because the thing about beauty is always in the eye of the beholder, so to speak, but you may have that situation going on too. So his ego may be so fragile that he doesn't talk to you because he doesn't think he'd actually handle it if you rejected him. Yes, that is already in his mind. Before he walks up to you, before you said hi, before you even talk about the price of the oranges, you know? So trust a lot of times is out there in the other person, not in you. So first of all, let's drop that one out of, out of the equation. Now, let's speak about the big stuff. Trusting yourself, or should I say not trusting yourself. Most of the time this comes up because somehow you feel you have to make a certain impression or appearance towards somebody else and you don't trust that they will receive it. Yes, it's trusting they will receive you the way you think you're putting yourself out and you don't trust that. That's one of the options. Now I'm gonna give you a few, so don't go with that's the wrong answer or the right answer right off the bat. There's a few choices out here. So one of them is the way you carry yourself, the way you see yourself inside doesn't match what you believe the reality is out there for how people see you. I've had this one, I'd, I've had this one on and off for a long time myself, so I know this one personally, that I thought I was having a whole bunch of um, challenges out there, but actually people saw me a lot better than I thought I did. Sorry, than I thought they did. And that was a big wake-up call for me. Now that wasn't romantic though, but I was, just in, I was in business and other social situations. In fact, what I discovered now is I'm being received way better than I thought I was, and it keeps getting better and better, so I'm actually kind of enjoying the ride. Okay, that's too much information now. So <laughs> getting back to this context, so for, your, for yourself, so that's one of the options you may be dealing with. Second option is, your lack of trust, oftentimes, in fact, this is quite a majority of times, comes from the simple experience that you've had your trust violated before. Yes, violated before. You've had an experience with somebody who you thought was amazing, and again, I'm talking romantic relationship context here, where so this, is, this is number five, number six now. This is number six, so four outside, two inside so far. I'm just keeping track of the numbers. So this is the second one. So the sec this one is one of the biggest ones though, is where your track record, your history with people you're attracted to has not been pretty. And you've had your trust violated because of different reasons, whether it was the person you met wasn't the person they ended up being. Maybe the way you were with them wasn't the way you wanted to be. Maybe they cheated on you or dumped you or walked away and you didn't know why. The biggest challenge with this trust thing, by the way, is they never tell you why they leave. So you feel this, 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 um, what's the word looking for? This, this chasm, so to speak, of uncertainty because you don't know why they left. Again, like I said in the earlier one about the external where the guy left without talking to you because he may have had his alarm go off or realized his car was on a uh, car was stuck was on an expired meter or he had to go see his wife or something else happened and you don't know the answer so you then don't trust yourself. Same thing true internally with people you meet is your lack of trust in yourself can be coming from the fact you have had your trust violated before and you never found out why. This is the biggest one of all probably is that lack of trust and then not having trust in knowing what happened. That's a double whammy, as it were. So, and by the way, going back and asking them six years later, ain't gonna work. And I'm gonna get to some solutions, by the way, so bear with me. There's a third one in here, which is really the, the, deep, the deeper seated one, is that you may never have trust built in the first place. Meaning that your upbringing through your family dynamics, through your history, was not built on a foundation of trust. Now maybe it was something where you were in a place where you were violated or abused or suppressed or in, um, injured as a child by your parents. So that your trust in them, who are the people you should be trusting the most because you're your parents, was never built or was violated. And this is the thing, let me speak on this one a bit more because I, I watched a friend's video today that just moved me because she was, she was outing those people who abused her when she was young. So the scenario I'm gonna speak of, just not hers, but just as a, as a reminder from that for me, is there are many women out there who as young girls were violated by their stepdads, their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, their neighbors. So their ability to trust men was destroyed when they were five, six, even younger years old. So ladies, if this, is, this happened to you, and, and you'd have to, I'm not asking you to out yourself in this context, but I'm saying to you, for yourself, 
reflect on this. If you were violated in some way, shape or form, sexually, emotionally, if you were molested, if you were mentally abused, if you were verbally abused by a male adult when you were a child, it basically destroys your ability to trust men when you're an adult. Now, it may not be overt, it may be subtle, but I guarantee you're carrying some trust issues with men because that was never resolved from the past. And this is, this is bigger than the one I mentioned before, which I said was the biggest, but the one I mentioned before was the biggest in terms of external that you're aware of, you're simply present to. This is the one that is most often suppressed. Because for most people, and this is going to apply for both genders, because boys go through violation and upset too by adults around them, so they may not trust. Now their trauma challenge can be, oftentimes boys are abused by men, their trust with other men is a challenge. They may be able to trust women more easily, but women have trouble, but women, boys and girls may have more challenge trusting adult men because of that's what happens to them more of the time. Now, there are abuse by women. There are, as my friend posted in her video, um, um, what's the word, not consent, but they were parties to what happened. So that um, being, turning a blind eye, that's probably a way of putting it, turning a blind eye to what happened when you were a child makes them party to what happened. And that means you may have trust issues with them as well. So this childhood trauma will then quite ha quite likely apply to your adult life where you are challenging issues, to tr you'll have challenged and you'll have issues trusting men and women based upon your childhood memories of your adult parents were like, or step parents or neighbors again as it, as it was. So I'm gonna give you some tips and some keys first of all. Let me say this from the beginning of this. Who you are is amazing. Who you are is whole. Who you are is a divine being, a expression of love, of light, of peace. And you've taken on programming, yes, programming, that takes you out of that understanding, takes you away from that belief. So first of all, know the truth of who you are. And that's what my work is a lot about. Having come from spiritual teaching, knowing the truth of my clients is the foundation of what I do with them. Because then I know that whatever happened to them is simply something that can be changed, it's not who they are. Because who you are at your core is a divine being having a human experience. You are whole, you are perfect, you are complete. And you have challenges perhaps in your life that have given you some challenges to work through in your adult life. So first of all, know who you are. Secondly, know that what happened to you was not your fault. I'll say that one again. What happened to you was not your fault. Any adult that hurts, wounds, abuses a child has an accountability to be faced up to, but the child has no party in that. There's no way they could have stopped it. And I'm looking at too deep into that one because there's a whole, whole mess of emotional baggage in that one too. So secondly, it wasn't your fault. Thirdly, whatever happened to you as a child can, yes, can be healed in your consciousness. So again, first of all, you're a divine being, you're already perfect and whole. Secondly, what happened to you as a child was not your fault. Doesn't matter what they said to you. Maybe they said you, if they said you were too loud or you were too quiet or you were too attractive or you're too cute, whatever that was, that was their projection on you, not your truth. It wasn't your fault. And thirdly, that internalization of that experience, because it's all inside your memory, it's not out there anymore. That internalization can be transformed, can be changed, can be healed. This is the deep work that can be done. This work I do with clients. So I'm gonna invite you to reach out to me if this is something you wanna do work about. But the trust, to get back to the beginning, or sort of cycling back to the beginning, the trust I'm talking about is really trusting who you are. And that disconnect from the outside to the inside is because you have these um, distorted lenses of life that you've been imprinted with because of what happened when you were a child. Those abusive experiences, those challenging experiences have tinted your vision of the world so you can't see it as clearly as you want, really would like to. But the reality is, inside of you is the truth deep inside that's been hidden, buried, maybe even covered up, and probably likely by you, protected from what happened. The work to be done is to go back and to basically make that place safe again so you can trust yourself. Again, trust is the key. When you trust yourself again, everything around you transforms. That's probably the, that is the biggest way I'd suggest of getting out of this, if that's what's going on for you. So, I didn't expect to go that deep on this one, but that's one of the biggest um, keystones of self-trust is to resolve what's in the way internally and that's true in anything that happens so I'm speaking about the deeper example here but there can be trust issues on other levels too that happen when you were younger that it could have been anything from getting stuff taken from you 
when you were a kid. Maybe someone stole a ball from you when you were a child and you had rejection and trust issues for the boys ever since. It can be that simple too. But those things that happen to us, those experiences, tend to reduce our trust in ourselves because we don't know differently. But again, there's nothing wrong with you. Those trust issues are because of what you believe to be the truth, but they're not. And rewiring that belief system, changing those beliefs, is the way to resolve it. How it, my clients, I can tell you another time. In fact, what I invite you to do to reach out if you want some help is to go to my website, which is barryselby.com, and click on the Let's Chat Navigation Choice. In fact, it's barryselby.com forward slash chat. Go there, schedule a time, reach out and have a talk with me, because this is a big stuff. And if it's one of those things you're dealing with, I invite you to reach out and get a talk with me, to have a talk with me. We can, we can certainly get some headway done in the first chat we have and see if we want to work together. I do not take clients without having a conversation first. So just so you know, I don't sign up clients blindly. So if you want to work with me directly, sign up for that first. Because I want to know I want to work with you as well, just to be clear. One of the keys of building that muscle back up to trust yourself, that self-connection, is self-love. Um, I talked about this before. I haven't talked about it for a few days because I was on another rant for a few days which you can back, I do invite you to watch those broadcasts. That was 481, 480, and 479. Um, powerful talks about feminine stuff. And anyway, go watch those. Go back and watch those. This reminded about the self-love. Anthony. Anthony. Sorry, let me see what you said there. You cannot thank me enough for these. Oh, shit. You shared them with many of my friends, both male and female, and they have found these amazing source of help. And they helped me as well. You're very welcome, Anthony. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate the feedback. Wow, thank you. No, I really appreciate that. That was, that was, I felt that. Um, self love. <laughs> Knock me off track for a second. Yes, self love. Yes, Diane. Uh, hi, Diane. Um, self love is the fertile soil. Whoop, just slipped out of there. Self love is the fertile soil that fuels soul goals. Always root everything in that. Yes, exactly. As we're building muscle, any muscle, Sue was saying, any, as with any building any muscle, practice is the key. Indeed, it is. That's why I have a self-love guided meditation practice. <laughs> because self-love is a cornerstone. It's a key. And I've always said in broadcasts all last year, I was talking about how if you just take five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, look in the mirror, tell yourself you love you. Yes, back to self-love, indeed. Um, thank you, Diane. Yes, I love you too. And we, we'll do a dual broadcast sometime soon about something juicy for us to share about. Um, so self-love. <laughs> back to self-love. I've created because people, my clients ask me for this. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. Um, I'm the real deal. I'll take that on too. Self-love. We'll get out there eventually. <laughs> it became clear I need to create something for my clients because self-love in the mirror is something you say, go do it. And you, may, you may do it, you may not. What I created was a self-love practice, which is guided meditations, an AM1 and a PM1, so two, plus a guided script that will help you with this. That you can go to my website. If you go to my website, which is barryselby.com forward slash self love or one word, check it out, take a look. And if it works for you, just get invest in it, download it, and use it. It will change your life. 30 days, 30 days, yes, 30 days every day will change your life. And for that, I finally got through it. So thank you for <laughs> giving me a space in the comments. Uh, but I love all the love. So thank you for all the feedback. I appreciate it. If this means something to you, take it to heart. If there's need help you want to get, reach out to me. If there's somebody you know should watch this, please share it with them. Um, these are my daily broadcasts every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So far, so good. Every day's working. And this is number 482. Tomorrow will be 483. Closing, down, closing in on 500. Yes, I'm not, going, not stopping yet. After that, I don't know what, I, what my goal is. I didn't plan on 500. I plan on doing three or four. Look what happened. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being, me as al being with me as always. Um, oh, we can find my broadcasts. The replays of these go on my business page on Facebook, also onto YouTube, and onto my podcast. How do you find those? is barryselby.author is my web is my facebook business page on youtube my channel as all my social media is is my name barry selby and the playlist is messages from the masculine and then on my podcast which is on itunes you can search for messages from the masculine and you can subscribe and download you can subscribe on, on pod, my um, youtube channel as well and you can follow me on facebook and i think i've given you everything i need to tell you go forth and take care of yourselves my appreciation for you, your comments and feedback i hope you get some value from this Thank you as always for joining me and as always, please take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow for more uh, exploration. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.